What we want to do today, Allison, is break away from the graphs. They're lovely pictures, but I'm a math guy. If I can do something shorter with less work, and if it's clearer, I'll take that. Now, full disclosure here, I'm totally biased. I'm a math guy. This is applied math. It does make my little math nerd heart go pitter-pat. So if you see me sounding nerdily like, wow, this is really cool, suck it up and live with it, folks. It's me being me. Okay, Tyra, you can handle it? Yeah. The rate at which an object moves, known as its speed. Yeah, I kind of knew that. That's the fancy way of saying how fast something goes. Speed is a ratio. The word ratio means we're going to divide of distance over time. Speed is distance over time. You can sort of see that on your formula sheet, although they've got a few more things. They've got a triangle and an av in there, and we'll get to that. But you can kind of see that there. How is speed measured? Well, it's either measured in meters per second, which is that one there, or how do we measure speed on the roads? It's not kilometers, that's a distance. It's kilometers per something, per hour, okay? That's the standard uh, non sciency unit of speed. Or in the US, which is now the last country not to go metric, uh, it's miles per hour, stupid system. In the SI system, it's feet per second and miles per hour in the imperial system. Uh, although all of these units are useful, we're almost always going to try and work in meters per second. If they give us kilometers per hour, I'll give you a stupid clever way to convert it to meters per second. Uniform motion means motion at a steady, unchanging speed. Really, it means, you can write this down, the acceleration is zero, which means, as far as I'm concerned, Lydia, it's boring. But chapter nine, next chapter, we'll look at acceleration. And in fact, then we'll start looking at free fall. I'll show you a video of me jumping out of an airplane. Yes, I've jumped out of an airplane. And we'll look at how you can launch and drop, and it's much more interesting to me. But we've got to walk before we can run. Example. Suppose you're driving at 80 kilometers per hour. This first part is probably obvious. How far do you go in one hour if you're traveling 80 kilometers per hour? Write an 80 right underneath the one hour. How far do you go in two hours? 160. How about three hours? Now here's my question. How could I take a 3 and an 80 and get an answer without just doing it gut instinct? In other words, what's the mathematical? We're multiplying. We're multiplying. We're multiplying, right? So when we have yucky numbers, what will we do? Multiply with yucky numbers. Uh, so uh, 240 kilometers. And in a half hour, if you're going 80 kilometers per hour, how far will you go? 40. Is that okay, Andrea, so far? Yeah? Uh, what we've really just done without realizing it is derive the distance equation. The distance equation says distance is speed times time, although we usually don't write it that way. So the speed ratio is given by distance over time, which we write mathematically as average speed, because you could be slowing down and speeding up when you're driving. Nobody goes exactly constant unless you're on cruise control. Is given by the change in distance divided by the change in time. Now, note, we often get a little sloppy and we often omit the change in symbol. If you take physics 11 next year, I'm writing it this way. I'm not writing it V av equals delta t over delta, or delta d over delta t. A, it's hard to say. B, it's extra writing. C, it looks scary. I can do better. This is on your formula sheet. Find it. Okay. Ty, my friend, how many different variables are there in this equation? Three. What that means, Ty, is if I give you any two, you can find the third one. 
with a bit of cleverness. If I tell you the distance and the time, you can tell me how fast. If I tell you how fast and the time, you can tell me how far. If I tell you how far and how fast, you can tell me how long, how much time, with a little bit of cleverness. It says, rearrange this equation and solve for distance and solve for time. Okay. We want to get the D by itself. How would I do that? Well, see this T? What's this T doing mathematically to the D? Is it adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Dividing. So you may have learned in equation solving, you do the opposite to move things to the other side. What's the opposite of dividing by T? Timesing by T. Turns out the distance equation is that. Is that on your formula sheet? The second one, yes? Okay. So do you have to memorize it? No, but I'm a nerd. I'll always show you where it came from. It all comes out of the idea, Tyra, that speed is uh, meters per second, distance over time. And that's a V av. If you look at your purple, turn your purple formula sheet so you can see it, and you'll see the same equation there too. It's in the, uh, got it, right? Yeah. What does the av stand for? Average. Um, how would I get the t by itself? Well, look, 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 look. Uh, here, I want to get this by itself. What's the v doing to the t mathematically? Is there a plus sign there? No, in fact, you guys have learned some math. When I don't write any sign in between them, what mathematical operation are we talking about? Timesing. So how will I move this over? What's the opposite of timesing by V? So another equation, the time is the distance or displacement divided by the velocity. Hey, is that formula on your formula sheet? Yeah. So do you need to memorize it, Allison? Say no. But am I a nerd? Am I going to show you where it came from? So far, so good. Let's keep going. So the relationship between average velocity, displacement, and time is given by, so you guys have this box. You can rewrite it if you want to. But what you have on your formula sheet is V average, average velocity is displacement over time, distance equals velocity times time, and time equals distance divided by Velocity. I hate the triangles. For what it's worth, in physics 11, we would write it this way. We would write it this way. And we would write it this way. Because I think that looks way less intimidating. But it's the same idea. Okay. So, Three ways I wrote down here to express the formula. You know what? I'm going to just say we've already written it on the previous page. That's, oh, note, all three of these are on your formula sheet. Apparently, I, last time I taught this, I had the kids write this out like three times. I think, Jess, that's overkill. That's why I gave you a formula sheet. So how are we going to use this? Ty, how many variables were there in these equations? Three. Three. Any two, you can find the third. So you ready? Example two says this. If we can run at four meters per second, how long will it take us to run 100 meters? What's this question asking us to find? The speed, the distance, or the time? So here's, this is my approach, and I'm going to encourage you to follow my approach. Once you get good, you can take shortcuts. I'm big on writing something down. What did you say they're asking us to find? Time. I'm going to write this. T equals question mark. That's how I write down. They're asking me to find the time. But I don't want to write that much. The reason I do that, Allison, is the question's no longer blank. I've written something down. I've learned I feel better. 
and it, it's dumb, it's, it may sound weird, trust me, I've learned kids are now more relaxed. Then I start going through the question and I'm looking for numbers and physics words. The first number that I see is the number four. What is that? Here's your hint. I look at the units right next to it. Meet, what is meters per second a measure of? Distance, really? I measure distance in meters per second? Ah, it's the velocity. So I'm going to write down V equals 4. And this is why, Kyle, I said to you, it's really worth memorizing what units go with which numbers. Keep reading, keep reading. What's the next number I run into, Kyle? 100. What's the 100? How do you know? Meters. You can write meters per second, and you can write meters if you want to, but because I use the correct variables, I'm okay with that as well. So here's the deal. I'm looking for an equation that has a T, a V, and a D in it of those three, and I'd like the one that has the T by itself. Which equation has the T by itself of those three on your formula sheet? Can you more speed? Read it to me. Yes, delta. Yes, delta. Yeah, whatever. You can write all the fancy triangles and stuff if you want to. I'm going to be sloppy. Do you see how we found that, Sage? Okay. Now it's plug and chug. 100 divided by 4. Holy smokes, I can do this in my head. If I can run at 4 meters per second, you know how long it's going to take me to run 100 meters? So here's my question. Uh, Taylor, what'd you say? I, for, what'd you say? So here's what, right now, without doing any more thinking, do Olympic athletes run faster than four meters per second or slower than four meters per second? You know that. I, re, I can tell you that right now based on this. Because you get 25 seconds. That's closer to Mr. Duick's time, sadly. Example three. Read example three to yourself. I'll read it out loud. If we drive 300 kilometers to Kamloops at 120 kilometers per hour, how long will it take? What's example three asking me to find? Distance or speed or time? What's that 300? The title of a lousy movie? No. What's that 300? By the way, that movie really should have been called 299, right? Think about it. One guy survived. Anyways, I'm a math nerd. I noticed those things. Uh, what's that 300? Now, it's, I, it's not a time, because that's what they're asking me to find. It's either a velocity or a distance. Look at the units next to it. What are the units next to it? kilometers. What is it? If I haven't said so already, Tyra, it's worth memorizing what units go with which, which quantities. Hey, what's that 120? Here's your hint. Look at the units next to it. It's a speed or a velocity. It's actually a speed because they didn't give me a direction, but it doesn't matter. The math is going to work. I'm looking for an equation that has a T, a D, and a V in it, that has the T by itself. Mr. Duick, it's just like example two. It is. I'm walking you through this for a reason. T equals D over V. It's going to be 300 divided by 120, which is what? I can do this in my head. I think it's going to be 30 divided by 12, which is 15 divided by 6, which is 5 divided by 2. Uh, is the answer 2.5? Five? Someone double check me. Yeah. Is it? 2.5 what? Seconds? How do you know hours? You're right. How do you know hours? Because they said kilometers per. Okay, there's your hint. Sometimes you're going to need to change from kilometers per hour to meters per second. How do you do that? 
First, you change the kilometers to meters. One kilometer is a thousand meters. Then you change the hours to seconds. It turns out one hour is 3,600 seconds because it's 60 minutes and 60 seconds in one hour. So it's 60 times 60. And then you multiply by 1,000 and divide by 3,600. Say what? I got a better way. If, you give, if they give you kilometers per hour, you divide by 3.6 to go to meters per second. What do you divide by? 3.6. What do you divide by? What do you divide by? What do you divide by? I've learned over the years, Courtney, kids don't have a tough time remembering the 3.6, but they can't remember whether you divide or multiply. So Mr. Duick has an easy way for you to remember this. <clears throat> it goes like this. How many of you have been on the freeway, not the highway, the freeway? Okay, what's the speed in kilometers per hour on the freeway? It's a lovely, nice number. 100, 100 kilometers per hour, okay? If I said to you, convert 100 kilometers per hour to meters per second, my students almost always remember it's something to do with 3.6, but they can't remember whether you multiply or whether you divide. Suppose you multiplied. Suppose that was correct. It's not. Suppose that was correct. What is 100 times 3.6 in your head? If that was right, when you're on the freeway, you're going 360 meters every second. You're going three and a half football fields every second. You've been on the freeway. You've looked out the window. Are you going past three and a half football fields every second? No. It's not multiply then. You know what it is? Divide. This is how I remember it every time. I imagine myself on the freeway, Ty, and I say, well, I know it has something to do with the 3.6. It's either 100 times or 100 divide, and I can do the times in my head, and I get 360. No, I don't go 360 meters every second. That's three and a half football fields every second. So it's got to be divide. You can write down freeway trick or whatever if you want to. Let's start applying this. 75 kilometers per hour is how many meters per second? It's going to be 75 divided by, can you do that on your calculator, please? Do that one in your head, Mr. Duick. OK, maybe. Um, it's going to be 25 divided by 1.2. It's going to be 12.5 divided by 0.6. It's going to be 250 divided by 6. It's going to be... Uh, no, what do you got? 20 point, 20 point 20.8? Probably, is it repeating or does it stop there? 20.88888? So is it 20? Well, let's do the math, Mr. Duick. Oh, 20.8333, so not 20.8888888, 20.8, what? Meters per second. No, we went from kilometers per hour to meters per second, right? So on your own right now with your calculator, convert 95 kilometers per hour to meters per second. What do you get? You get 26 point, uh, would I round that to point 0.3 or would I round that to point 0.4? Point 0.4, so 26.4. We can already answer this. A car is moving at 120 kilometers per hour. When a moose steps onto the road 55 meters in front of the car, how long does the driver have to react and avoid hitting the moose? 
or if you want to go the negative version, Julie, how long until the moose gets schmucked? Okay. Uh, both. Both. Uh, Sage said the car gets schmucked, not the moose. In fact, if, any, if you ever go live up north, this is a major issue. Uh, I used to work at a vehicle rental place, and one of the trucks, one of the pickup trucks that we rented, hit a moose, and the driver was killed. Because what happens is the moose is exactly tall enough that what you're going to do is you're going to undercut its legs and its body, which weighs over a thousand pounds, is going to go into your windshield. It's, it's a serious issue in, up north. Several people a year get killed by hitting a moose. So you do one of two things, Sage. You either dodge or you duck and you hope that they'll be able to cut you out with the jaws of life afterwards. You ready? I have two strategies, DALP and DFIC. DALP stands for draw a little picture, when in doubt, DALP. And DFIC stands for, it's an acronym, come on Penn, you've been doing so good. Oh, it's been working so well. I did a bunch of updates over spring break, let's see. Close, now we're back. It stands for list your data, write down what you're being asked to find and what they told you. Find a formula. I used it last year in the electricity mm -hmm. and it worked well. Insert the numbers, insert the data into the formula and calculate or I just say crunch the answer. When in doubt, DALP and DFIC. So, how much distance, how long is that line? There's Mickey Moose. There's the car. They don't have to be good pictures. There's my picture. Sometimes I won't draw a picture if I can visualize it, but this time, I'll draw a picture. What's this question asking me to find? Distance, velocity, or time? What's this question asking me to find? Distance, velocity, or time? Time? Convince me. Ah, now, I heard two different approaches and both are good. Courtney said, it says how long, which does mean time. You said, hey, wait a minute, I see a velocity, I see a distance, all that's left is time. You can either use a process of elimination or you can figure it out from the words that they use. Either of them are fine. In fact, I use both. So I'm gonna write down Now I go look for numbers or physics-y words. We won't do any with physics-y words for a while yet, but I'll mention that still. What's that 120? Look at the units next to it. Kilometers per hour, what is that? I heard someone say distance, I heard someone say speed. So we need to memorize, Rylan, what's kilometers per hour? You said it, you were right. Speed. And I'm going to write the units this time for a reason. What's that 55? Look at the units next to it. What is it? 55 what? There's a problem with this question. Can anybody see what it is? Yeah, my units don't match. So I said to you that you were going to sometimes have to do a conversion from kilometers per hour to meters per second. We did it a little bit ago. Who remembers how we go from kilometers per hour to meters per second? I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with a 3.6. Okay, so let's go divide by 3.6. 
So one of the things, Allison, you have to keep an eye out for is make sure your units match. Okay. Hey, what is 120 divided by 3.6? 33.333? Okay. Um, I'm looking for the equation that's got the T by itself. Which equation is that? By the way, D, here's our data. F, find a formula. Distance over speed. That's the F part. What does the I stand for? Insert the numbers. What's the distance? 55. What's the speed? Not 120. What am I going to put there? 33.5. Now, if you went on your calculator, 120 divided by 3.6, I'll show you a neat trick, because it's not 33.3. It's really 33.3333333. So I'm going to go like this, 55 divided by, and I'm going to use my answer button instead of rounding off. All of you, if you have a decent calculator, have an answer button, and it's worth finding where it is, because A, it's less typing, and it's more accurate. Most of you, your answer button is going to be somewhere in the bottom row. It may be shift negative. It may be shift equals. If you can't find it, now is the time to ask me. I'll pause the video. And I get, uh, do you get 1.65? Uh, that's what you get if you didn't round off. The rest of you will have like 1.64 or 1.66 or close to that. Yes? Oh, pen stopped working again because I walked away. Hang on. Pause the video for a second. So uh, 1.65 hours or seconds? This is seconds because we converted it to seconds. Can you react that fast? Barely. Barely. I don't think you'd be able to stop that fast, but you might be able to swerve that fast. Of course, the problem with swerving is often you're swerving into the other lane. If there's oncoming traffic, that's even worse. But I tried to pick an example that was realistic. Okay? Certainly, if you were designing corners and things, this would help you decide how far ahead of the corner to put the sign so people can see the sign and react enough to slow down. Giving you some applications of this. This is used in road engineering all the time. Matt, you live? Just making sure. Um, we can work with any self-consistent set of units. In other words, if they give me it in feet and inches, I can do the math. The formulas I give you will work. But we would prefer meters and seconds and meters per second. And we'll use fractions to convert between systems. That 3.6 is one. Um, a good habit to get into in physics, once you get your final answer, put a box around it and double check to make sure you have the units next to it, because I will be fussy. Not on the box, but on the units. Uh, the reason you put a box around it, Allison, you can see we've got lots of numbers kicking around everywhere. It makes it easier for you to spot what you just did. Okay. A few more. What's this question asking me to find? It's asking me to find... Average speed or average velocity, so I'll go that, right? What is, this one is pretty clear. It says, by the way, in physics, they're all word problems, but what I like is they're word problems where what you're being asked to find is usually pretty obvious. What is the average velocity? Oh, they're asking me to find average velocity. What that means is now I'm going to defic. I'm going to list the rest of the data. What's that 4.0? Look at the units next to it. Someone said speed, someone said time. What are the units right there? Seconds. OK. T equals 4. What's that 14? It's not speed. You know how I know? What are they asking me to find? 
Speed would be kind of silly if they gave me the speed and asked me to find the speed. Distance. Redeem yourself, Cam. Can you find me an equation that has the V by itself? I'll give you a hint. Uh, v equals, it'll be V average because it's for finding average speed. But So it's going to be 14 over 4, which is what? Three point five, if I do it in my head, am I right? Three point five, and that's meters per second. We're not done, although I'll put a box around this one. They wanted my answer in meters per second and what? Kilometers per hour. How do I go from meters per second to kilometers per hour? What number does it have something to do with? 3.6. Now to go from kilometers per hour to meters per second, I divide by 3.6. How do you think if I go the other way? I heard someone say it. Time point. Yep, times. If I go 3.5 meters per second times how many kilometers per hour is this dog running? By the way, this is pretty slow. 3.5, well, 3.5 meters per second. 3.5 meters is about from me to Kyle. So the dog is running that distance in about one second. That's not really fast for a dog, but it's also not walking. It's kind of jogging, right? I'm kind of imagining it. I, by the, I, I'll try and give you an idea of what really big and really small numbers are, just so you have a gut instinct. Uh, what is 3.5 times 3.6? 3.6 times 3.6, Mr. Duick? 3.5 times 3.6. 12.6 kilometers per hour? Putting that in perspective, an Olympic athlete can run faster than that. Well, of course an Olympic athlete can run faster than that. How fast do Olympic athletes run, roughly? Joseph, about 100 meters in 10 seconds, about 10 meters per second. Usain Bolt, about nine, even faster. So you know what? A human being could run almost three times faster than this dog, an Olympic athlete. Most of you could outrun this dog. Most of you. Old. Uh, a boat travels 250 meters east in a time of 12, 120 seconds. Now, here, I really, can you all look up, should have said average speed because I didn't give you a direction. Here, I'm asking for the average velocity because there is a directional component. I think our direction is going to be east. Try this one on your own. I'm going to freeze the screen so you can't see what I'm writing. List your data, find a formula, insert, crunch, get an answer. I got these. And these are both wrong. <gasps> yeah. 
And the reason they're technically, did uh, 2.33 and 8.4, are those the values you got okay? Uh, the reason they're technically wrong is they asked for velocity, which is a vector, so I should include the direction east, which is what the question said we were traveling, and I should include the direction east, which is what the question said we were traveling. I've tried here, Matt, to give you an idea of what's really fast or really slow. So um, here are some meters per second speeds that are worth kind of wrapping your brain around. Car on a city street. Oh, we can actually calculate this. In kilometers per hour, what's street speed? You guys are close to getting your licenses, so hopefully you've picked up on that. So you know what? Let's go 50 kilometers per hour. How do I change that to meters per second? So street speed, about four, I'll say 14 meters per second-ish, because we're doing rough. Faster than an Olympic athlete, Joseph. Humans can't run that fast. Maybe for very, very short bursts, but I doubt it. Walking. Well, if you're walking at an easy pace, how many meters per second do you think you're traveling? How fast? You know what? I think it's around, if you're taking a step every second or so, and each of your steps is a little less than a meter give, at, at an easy pace, not speed walking. I'd say about that. Joseph, you've already answered this. Running, fastest man, what are the fastest people run at? Yep, a little less if they're really fast. But if you're running 10 meters a second, you're world class. You're probably able to make a living doing your running thing. Anybody know how fast the speed of sound is? How many of you have ever seen a situation where off in the distance you saw someone uh, hitting a sledgehammer or chopping it or hitting something and then the sound arrived? Have you, have you experienced any of that? Okay. It's, it's really cool. I always stop and, oh, I'm far enough away. So sound travels, it turns out. You don't need to memorize that. It's just, in fact, the way I remember it, I remember it travels at 333, like three threes, even though that's not quite right. It varies. It depends actually on uh, air temperature and altitude and how humid the air is. So it can go anywhere from about 320 meters per second to about 340 meters per second. Uh, that's why stuff uh, sounds, Rachel, on, on a rainy day or on a humid day, stuff sounds a bit different. It's actually uh, your ears are catching that the speed of sound isn't quite what it was on a nice, dry, sunny, clear day. Anyone know the speed of light, which is the fastest thing there is? Okay. Why is it the fastest thing? That's a whole other proof, but Einstein proved that. Basically, he showed that as you get closer to the speed of light, something very bizarre happens. Your mass increases. So the closer you get to the speed of light, the more mass you need to hit the speed of light. You'll have an infinite mass. You'll have the mass of the universe. And we can't get the mass of the universe up to the speed of light. We don't have enough energy. That's theory of relativity in about two seconds there. Speed of light is this, three with eight zeros. Eight. Pardon me? You knew that? I spelled vacuum wrong? Oh, is it two C's and one U? Not that. I, sp I spelled it right, didn't I? I'll have to, f I'll, I'll figure it out. I didn't, I, by the way, this is from someone else's handout. I didn't type it myself, but I think it's right. I don't know. What else did I spell wrong? Oh, the gas station spells it wrong? That may be. 
Okay. How fast does a jet airliner go? Do jet airliners break the sound barrier? No, they're not allowed to. Okay. Uh, the only one that did for a while, the Concorde, which no longer runs, that one went about twice the speed of sound, and that was because it was over the ocean, and you weren't going to damage anything. So, what must they be l less than? Okay, jet airliners. They're around. Or about 900 kilometers an hour. Yep. Quickly, bunny. You all know that the Earth is spinning, which means all of us, although we think we're standing still, we're actually moving quite fast. You're moving the fastest at the equator. So if you lived on the equator, how fast do you think we're moving? Turns out, you can calculate it. Speed is distance over time, right? Once around a circle has a special name. What do we call the distance around a circle? It begins with the letter C. You've seen it in math. Circumference, which is 2 pi r, which is 2 pi r. I happen to know that the radius of the Earth is 638 with four zeros. And I know exactly how long it takes the Earth to go around once. No, that's around the sun. 24 hours, I got to convert that to seconds. 24 times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. If you were living on the equator and a magic giant suddenly stopped the earth from moving instantly, this is how fast you'd smash into the wall. Because you'd keep moving. Yeah. It is 2 pi 638 divided by 400 and 64 meters per second. Or if I wanted to, about 1,006, about 1,700 kilometers per hour. And I think I've just answered Rachel's question. If you were in a car accident at 1,700 kilometers per hour, would you survive it? So you ready? For a candy, I'll pause the video. How much more are we going to get done here? Hmm. What's the displacement of a, is this asking for distance or displacement? So we're going to have a vector, which means we're going to have a direction in our answer. Of a bicycle that travels 8 meters per second north for 15 seconds. We're going to use our defect approach. By the way, you'll notice I haven't dulped, I haven't drawn a picture because I can visualize a bicycle traveling. This isn't a complicated one. What's this question asking me to find? By the way, displacement would have the vector symbol above it. All right. What's that 8? And here's your hint. Please look at the units next to it. Oh, and it's not a distance cause, or a displacement because that's what they're asking me to find. What's that eight? It's a velocity. Uh, you, it, I won't be fussy, but they said speed. It is a velocity because it's also a direction, right?
keep reading. Oh, I see a 15. What's that 15? So, if a bicycle is traveling at 8 meters per second due north for 15 seconds, what will its displacement be? I'm looking for an equation that has the d by itself. It's that one, yeah? Again, I think they have an av and a delta t, but it, it's v times t, is it not? Okay. It's 8 times 15. Sorry? I can't hear you. Oh, 120, you already did it? Is it 120? 120 units? Meters? Direction? Yep. The, the scalar and the vector equations are the same. It's just that you're going to put vector things in for vector answers and scalar things in for scalar answers. So I always get in the habit of when I'm done, check my units, check if there is a direction, and then I put a box around it. The box around it, honestly, as a math nerd, that's the same thing when the guys score a touchdown and spike the football. This is me spiking. I, I got the answer. It's my way of telling the marker, shut up, I'm getting full marks. Uh, example, a person, originally at the starting line, runs west at 6.5 meters per second. What's the runner's displacement? Give me a second here. I'm going to pause. Okay, look up for a second. You're not going to get all of this done right now, but uh, here's what I think you can do, okay? This first page, calculating average velocity, I think you can do everything on this page. We'll practice this a bit more next class but that's okay. Then we're reviewing some of the graph stuff. So certainly, what does the slope of a line on a position versus time graph represent? What was it, Max? Velocity. What is a straight line on a position? I'll let you think about some of this. This was from before spring break, but you're doing lots of rise over run calculations. For this chart here, if you can get straight to the slope without listing the rise and the run separately, if you're that good tie, feel free. So you're going to be finding the rise and the run of line A, line B, line C, and line D. I think you can do everything on this page. Ah, this is from before spring break. See if you can handle this. If you get this far here, I'm good with that. But I'll pick up with some of this next class as well. Okay? Let me pause the video.